is there no humiliation left for the Palestinians? After Oslo, after the two-state solution, after the years of Israeli occupation, a very way and area seek to define which kind of occupation the Palestinians must live under, after the vast Jewish colonization of land thieved from its Arab owners, after the mass killings of Gaza, and Trump's decision. That Jerusalem, all of Jerusalem, must be the capital of Israel, are the Palestinians going to be asked to settle for cash and a miserable village? Is there no shame left? For the Palestinians are soon to be awarded the ultimate deal. Ultimate, as in the last, definitive, terminal, conclusive, no more cards to play. Cash in your chips, go for broke, take it or leave it, to hell with you, cease and desist, end game deal. A pitiful village as a capital, no end to colonization, no security, no army, no independent borders, no unity, in return for a huge amount of money, billions of dollars and euros, millions of pounds, zillions of dinars and shekels and spun ulix and filthy lucre, the real moolah. I believe, quoth Crown Prince Kushner this week that Palestinian people are less invested in the politicians' talking points than they are in seeing how a deal will give them and their future generations new opportunities, more and better paying jobs and prospects for a better life. Is Trump's son-in-law, advisor on the Middle East, real estate developer and US investor, delusional? After three Arab-Israeli wars, tens of thousands of Palestinian deaths and millions of refugees, does Jared Kushner really believe that the Palestinians will settle? For cash? Palestinian mourners carry the dead body of Mukhtar Ibu Hamas, 25, killed by Israeli forces in Gaza on the 14th of May. A Palestinian woman flashes a victory sign during a protest near the border fence. Israeli soldiers guard on top of a watchtower along the Israel Gaza border. Palestinian demonstrators react to fired tear gas. Palestinian demonstrators run for cover. U.S. President's daughter Ivanka Trump and her husband, senior White House advisor Jared Kushner arrive for the controversial inauguration of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. The United States moved its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem after months of global outcry, Palestinian anger and exuberant praise from Israelis over President Donald Trump's decision tossing aside decades of precedent. Palestinians carry a demonstrator injured during clashes U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman speaks during the dedication ceremony of the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem a Palestinian man walks in the smoke billowing from burning tires Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu waves as he arrives ahead of the dedication ceremony of the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Palestinian protesters lying on the floor during clashes Palestinian protesters burn tires Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his wife Sarah, senior White House advisor Jared Kushner, U.S. President's daughter Ivanka Trump, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman attend the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. A Palestinian man assists a wounded protester A Palestinian man holding his national flag walks in the smoke billowing from burning tires U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and Ivanka Trump unveil an inauguration plaque during the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Palestinians carry a protester injured Ivanka Trump and U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin stand next to the dedication plaque at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. A Palestinian demonstrator uses a sling to hurl stones at Israeli troops during a protest against U.S. Embassy A female Palestinian demonstrator stands amidst smoke Ivanka Trump attends the opening ceremony of the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem Palestinian medics and protesters evacuate a wounded protester An Israeli soldier aims his weapon at Palestinian demonstrators Gazans carry an injured protester Protesters gather to demonstrate An Israeli soldier fires tear gas at demonstrators A Palestinian demonstrator poses with a slingshot A demonstrator kicks a burning tire Palestinians congregate prior to the 
their demonstration against the U.S. moving their embassy to Jerusalem Female Palestinian demonstrators react to tear gas fired by Israeli troops A Palestinian demonstrator reacts A Palestinian man throws leaflets dropped by the Israeli military during a protest against the U.S. embassy move to Jerusalem and ahead of the 70th anniversary of Nakba at the Israel-Gaza border, east of Gaza City a boy holds a Palestinian flag as he stands amidst smoke a Palestinian demonstrator tries to put out a fire caused by objects dropped from Israeli drones during a protest against the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem and ahead of the 70th anniversary of Nakba. In Khan Yunis in the southern Gaza Strip a Palestinian demonstrator with a slingshot protesters look up at falling tear gas canisters dropped by an Israeli drone Palestinian mourners carry the dead body of Mukhtar Ibu Hamas, 25, killed by Israeli forces in Gaza and on the 14th of May a Palestinian woman flashes a victory sign during a protest near the border fence Israeli soldiers guard on top of a watchtower along the Israel Gaza border Palestinian demonstrators react to fired tear gas Palestinian demonstrators run for cover U.S. President's daughter Ivanka Trump and her husband's senior White House advisor Jared Kushner arrived for the controversial inauguration of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. The United States moved its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem after months of global outcry. Palestinian anger and exuberant praise from Israelis over President Donald Trump's decision tossing aside decades of precedent. Palestinians carry a demonstrator injured during clashes U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman speaks during the dedication ceremony of the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem a Palestinian man walks in the smoke billowing from burning tires Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu waves as he arrives ahead of the dedication ceremony of the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Palestinian protesters lying on the floor during clashes Palestinian protesters burn tires Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his wife Sarah, senior White House advisor Jared Kushner, U.S. President's daughter Ivanka Trump, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman attend the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. A Palestinian man assists a wounded protester A Palestinian man holding his national flag walks in the smoke billowing from burning tires U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and Ivanka Trump unveil an inauguration plaque during the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Palestinians carry a protester injured Ivanka Trump and U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin stand next to the dedication plaque at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem a Palestinian demonstrator uses a sling to hurl stones at Israeli troops during a protest against U.S. Embassy A female Palestinian demonstrator stands amidst smoke Ivanka Trump attends the opening ceremony of the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem Palestinian medics and protesters evacuate a wounded protester An Israeli soldier aims his weapon at Palestinian demonstrators Gazans carry an injured protester Protesters gather to demonstrate An Israeli soldier fires tear gas at demonstrators A Palestinian demonstrator poses with a slingshot A demonstrator kicks a burning tire Palestinians congregate prior to their a demonstration against the U.S. moving their embassy to Jerusalem Female Palestinian demonstrators react to tear gas fired by Israeli troops A Palestinian demonstrator reacts A Palestinian man throws leaflets dropped by the Israeli military during a protest against the U.S. embassy move to Jerusalem and ahead of the 70th anniversary of Nakba at the Israel-Gaza border East of Gaza City a boy holds a Palestinian flag as he stands amidst smoke A Palestinian demonstrator tries to put out a fire caused by objects dropped from Israeli drones during a protest against the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem and ahead of the 70th anniversary of Nakba in Khan Yunis in the southern Gaza Strip a Palestinian demonstrator with a slingshot protesters look up at falling tear gas canisters dropped by an Israeli drone did he not notice ever that the Palestinians who have protested and suffered and died and lost their lands for 70 years have not been demonstrating in their streets for better roads duty-free zones or another airport? 
does he think that the people of Gaza have come onto their streets and marched towards the lethal border fence because they are demanding new prenatal clinics? How can he humiliate an entire Arab people by suggesting that their freedom, sovereignty, independence, dignity, justice and nationhood are merely politicians talking points? Is there no end to this insanity? No, there is not. For the drip feed of detail which is emerging about the trump kushnu ultimate deal in Israeli newspapers, the venerable Haaretz in the lead, is that Palestinians will have to abandon East Jerusalem as the capital of a future. Palestine, that Israel will withdraw from a handful of villages east and north of Jerusalem, the measly Abu Dis among them, to create a Potemkin capital, but will remain forever in the old city. That a Palestinian state will be completely demilitarized, so much for security, but that every Jewish colony constructed illegally on Arab land, for Jews and Jews only, will remain, and that Israel will control the entire Jordan Valley. Right of return? Forget it. And all this for billions of dollars in infrastructure projects a free trade zone at al in the Sinai, an outpouring of money into the West Bank, a new Palestinian leadership, outward go corrupt, arrogant, senile, dictatorial Mahmoud Abbas whose leadership has no ideas and has made no efforts with prospects of success. This latter from Kushner, of course, in favor of a new and pragmatic man who will, hear more delusional thinking, be even more pliant peace-loving and groveling than Abbas himself. Donald Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu hail U.S. recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital All this nonsense depends on the largesse of Saudi Arabia, whose bungling crown prince appears to be arguing with his kingly father, who does not want to abandon the original Saudi initiative for a Palestinian state with. Jerusalem as its capital, and the feebleness of King Abdullah of Jordan, whose country's IMF imposed financial suffering has provoked unprecedented riots and the fall of his government, and the support of Egypt's field marshal slash president who will supposedly be happy to impose law and financial benefits on the Egyptian Gaza border. Oh yes, and there will be no real contact between Gaza and the West Bank. Hamas has been forgotten, it seems. Does one laugh or cry? When Trump moved the US Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem amid the massacre of Gaza, the world screamed, but then fell silent. The split screen of diplomatic adulation and mass killing scarcely a hundred miles apart has somehow normalized the combination of death and injustice in the Arab-Israeli conflict. Yes, they got away with it. If American diplomats can stand to attention in Jerusalem against the crackle of sniper fire along the Gaza frontier, what's next? There is something strange, almost comical, about the photographs of America's diplomatic peacemakers sitting around Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. In the West, we choose, with good moral reason, not to emphasize the religious or ethnic background of these men. But the Israelis do philosopher Yuri Avneri does, and Haaretz points it out, that all are Jewish, at least two of them enthusiastic supporters of the Israeli colonization of Palestinian West Bank land, including the U.S. ambassador to Israel who called the moderate J Street Jewish lobby group worse than Karpus. Was it not possible? within the entire U.S. diplomatic corps and America's advisors, to find even one Muslim American to join the team? Would the peacemakers not have benefited from just one voice from a man or woman who shared the same faith as the other half of the proposed Arab-Israeli peace? But no. Nor would it have mattered. Abbas has broken off all diplomatic relations with the White House since Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as the Israeli capital, 
and withdrawn his ambassador to Washington. The Ultimate Deal Originally the Oslo Agreement, although even that was a poison chalice, and then a whole series of miniature retreats and withdrawals and further occupations, and then ad hoc anti-terror. Conferences, now represents only the total humiliation of the Palestinian people, no East Jerusalem, no end to colonization, no recognition of the right to return, no state, no future. Just cash.